when you start talking about monkeys, many assume you are going back to the Old Testament. But we need to understand the intelligence of spiritual operations so that we can appreciate it. You know, Jesus was speaking. He said, verily, verily, I say unto you, he said, the works that I do, he said, they that believe in me, the works that I do, you shall do also. And he said, greater works than these shall ye do. So Jesus was drawing our attention to something that what was must not be lost in a bid to access what is not. You know, he said, ask, you will receive. Seek, you will find. Knock, the door will be open. You ask for what is known. If you don't know what is, what will you ask for? But you seek for that which is unknown. So he's telling us that there must be a, a compilation of the past, the present, and the future. Because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the one who was, who is, and who is to come. So the whole idea behind mantles is an attempt of the spirit to aggregate the graces and the possibilities that were so that a generation will not lose their heritage. In Songs of Solomon chapter 4 verse 4, help me project scriptures. You can write them down. He spoke to us about the weapons of many warriors. He said the neck is like the tower of David, builded for an armory, whereupon hang a thousand bucklers, all the shield of mighty men. So the graces and the dimensions they caught in God, when they ascended to heaven, like he said, some will not leave it. What the Holy Ghost does is that he traps it, and he keeps it somewhere in the spirit, because it's the heritage of a generation. There's an armor in the spirit, where the shield and the armors of warriors are kept. Those are the things we refer to as mantles. Because everything they, do, they did were powers they found in God. And those powers are designed and articulated to advance God's eternal agenda. So when the assignment is over, the graces, the aggregation of those graces are trapped for generations to come. It will be foolishness for a generation to assume they don't need the powers and the graces that the patriarchs walked in because they want to access what is and what is to come. That's not the intelligence of the Holy Spirit. Every grace that once visited the earth will still be utilized. And I want to let you know that there has never been a grace on earth that did not come from Jesus. So Elijah is not apart from Christ because Jesus is the author of grace. But Jesus did not begin when he incarnated. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. He said the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. So when you find a grace manifest in the Old Testament, it's because the patriarchs met the pre-incarnate Christ. Dispensationally, a generation saw him when a virgin gave birth to him. But the patriarchs that moved the hand of God, they encountered him before he was born. And that was why in John chapter 8 verse 58, Jesus was talking. He said, Abraham, your father, saw my day. You are the ones who are seeing me now. The patriarch ascended to Zion. He saw me. Abraham knows Jesus. He said, he saw my day. And he said, he rejoiced in it. And they looked at him and said, you are not yet 50. And you say, Abraham saw your day. And he said, before Abraham was, I am. He encountered me before I put on flesh. So everything you saw Abraham manifest was a grace in Christ. But you see, now that Christ has come, the things that Abraham manifested is now an aggregated heritage for a generation to trap. They are not outside Christ. They are also part of Christ. So there is the operation of mantles and there's the operation of graces. Graces are the things we catch now after Christ has resurrected. But mantles are the dimensions of Christ that were available before Christ took on flesh. They both will combine together for you to manifest kingdom. And so mantles are tied to men because men were the ones who caught them. But it's not just about the men. They are heritages in God. Because when you study men, like he was saying on Sunday, 
Men are patterns. They represent the dimensions of God. And so when we talk about mantles, we are talking about graces in Christ that certain men caught. And accessing those dimensions, we mean routing the patterns that they became. Let me show you a scripture. Genesis 26 from verse 4 to 5. When Isaac was about to run from Gerah to Egypt because he wanted to survive, God stopped him. He said, stay still in Gerah. Don't run. He said, I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven. And I will give unto thy seed all these countries, and in thy seed shall the nations of the earth be blessed. These were the same words God spoke to Abraham. So the reason Isaac could enter into this dimension was because Abraham had created a gangway in the spirit. So God went back to tell him how he will become this in verse 5. He said, because Abraham obeyed. These are the patterns. The reason you can walk in the Abrahamic order is that you too will obey my voice. You will keep my charge, my commandments, my status, and my laws. So when we are talking about the man too of Abraham, we are not talking about a man. We are talking about patterns that he caught that made him walk in certain dimensions. So God was educating Isaac that these patterns are available. And because of these patterns, you can walk in the blessing. If you hearken to my voice, keep my charge, keep my commandments, my status, and my laws, you will be as blessed as Abraham. That means everything Abraham did, suddenly you too will do it. Because that ability is there, but there is a pattern that will make you route it. This was the same thing God taught Solomon. First Kings chapter 3. Read for me from verse 12. I'm showing you, the, I'm giving justification to the things I want to teach. Go to verse 14. I don't have time to read long. He said, if thou will walk in my ways and keep my status and my commandment as thy father David did walk, then I will lengthen thy days. That means what David manifested, you too can manifest if you keep this consecration because David is a pattern. So when we are talking about mantles, we are talking about gateways to accessing powers that were. So that we can confront the things they confronted in their time. Because the darkness that they fought has not left the earth. They are still here. And so if you want to confront a king, you must know something in Christ that Elijah knew. Otherwise, when you confront a king, you'll be subdued. Because Jesus didn't necessarily need to confront kings anymore. Because Elijah has confronted kings. And Elijah carried something in Christ. So if you want to confront a king, you must see Christ through Elijah's operation. You see, the reason sometimes we are weak is because we want to cut off the oracles of God that he revealed to the fathers and begin something new. What was is what is and is what we call. That's why many Christians can't confront kings. Because when Jesus walked on the earth, he never talked to any king. Even when he stood before Pilate, he was quiet. Pilate said, won't you say anything? He said, for this cause was I born. For this reason came I into the world, that I may bear witness to the truth. And you're wondering, why didn't he do anything to the king? Because he did something to kings in Elijah. So if you want to know how Jesus confronts kings, and if you want to know how to defeat kings, you must find the dimension of Christ that Elijah carried. So a Christian who cuts off the Elijah operation because he's in Christ will suffer loss. Because before Elijah was, I am. Before Moses was, I am. These are patterns. Mantles are patterns in Christ that brings empowerment. And so when we talk about getting mantles, we are talking about bringing us into patterns that authorize us to operate kingdom in this holistic mission. Go and check the life of Jesus, you discover there were many things he didn't need to do. Because those who encountered him before he was born as a man did those things. Jesus was speaking in Luke 24, verse 44. He said, All the laws and the prophets were giving witness to me. So Elijah was not about Elijah, it was about Jesus. Moses was not about Moses, it was about Jesus. All the law and all the prophets, the whole reality about their existence 
was to give testimony to me. This is why many Christians have no consecrations. Because while you walk grace through revelation, you walk mantles through consecration. And we are talking so many things, but we are weak. Because we are not complete in our equipping. Mantles are lacking. Tonight, we want to trust God to open gateways to patterns so that we can access mantles. See, when I tell you tonight, mantles before, I'm telling you that what God will do is that He will open your spirit to understand and to access patterns. It's those patterns that hold those mantles. The moment you know those patterns and the ability to work them comes upon you, you will discover that the powers that those patterns regulate will also begin to manifest in your life. A mantle is a power that is related by a pattern. And if those patterns come alive in your spirit, those powers will begin to work in you. And trust me, you don't just need one mantle. You need many mantles. You know why? Because a garment is actually a combination of many mantles. That's why it said in Ephesians 6 from verse 13, it said, put on the whole armor. Those are mantles. Put on the whole mantles of God so that you are able to withstand in the day of battle. So when you find a man who has a spiritual garment, that's a man who wears many mantles. There are some mantles that give you speed in the spirit. There are some mantles that give you access in the heavenly places so that you have advantage of height. There are some mantles that teach your hands to fight and your fingers to war. If you don't have those mantles, you will discover as touching the kingdom business, you may be deficient. So tonight, God is not only giving mantles, he's giving garments. Because some of you, you need many of it. Many. Oh my God. You know, I don't want to talk much because he has, he has opened the, the heavens. Yeah. See, every mantle has a key that unlocks it. For example, for you to touch the mantle of Elijah, you must be given the ability to see. So that mantle, the consecration of that mantle, the ability to see. In 2 Kings 2.10, he said, if you see me as I'm taking, you have it. See, when John the Baptist came, when he was separated to the wilderness, the whole syllabus was to teach him how to see. So if you study John chapter 1 verse 33, John said, oh, the spirit, I did not know him. He said, but the one that sent me told me. He said, the one upon which you see the spirit descend. So the idea behind the Elijah mantle is the ability to see. So when God wants to impart you with the mantle of Elijah, what he does is that he opens your eyes to see. Because anything you see, you possess. So there are powers that you can't possess until you see. So the idea behind the Elijah mantle is not to bring an Old Testament prophet to impart you. It's to give you an ability to see because it's a pattern in the spirit. The law in the spirit is that whatever you see, you possess. So the mantle of Elijah gives you the capacity to see so that you can possess. As we pray here, some of you will begin to have capacity to perceive. To perceive. So when you, when, when you hear Germany, you will no longer see a geographical territory. You will see the prince ruling Germany. You will see the, the, the manipulation of that prince and you will disarm it and you will take over the land. That's the operation of the Elijah Mount. That's how mantles work. Mantles come to give you abilities and appetites for consecrations. Because if you get those abilities and those consecrations, the powers will rest upon you. But men represent those operations and dimensions. That's why we call those mantles after them. It's not that we are bringing a dispensation that is gone to superimpose on a new dispensation. Somebody is getting ready to catch something that, that has been on earth for a thousand years. Something that has been on this realm for thousands of years. How do you think some men become rulers? It's the Davidic mantle. There's a mantle that comes from you. That if you like, be rejected by your family. If you like, be rejected by your generation. They will have no choice but to bow before you. 
because that man to make kings david was a shepherd boy david was rejected when the prophet came to anoint the man brought seven of his sons and forgot david but the prophet wanted to anoint Eliab, and god said no i have refused him i have not rejected him i have refused him there's a difference between being rejected and being refused Elia was not rejected he was refused God rejects you if your heart is corrupt but God refuses you if, if either you are not ready or you are not the chosen one and seven sons were refused because the mantle was meant for somebody in the wilderness he had no training he has no formal education but the mantle is sensitive and when the mantle came upon him we now discovered why and that's the key to the Davidic mantle. is a broken heart. It was a man after God's heart. His heart was broken. In Psalm 51 verse 17, David fell down when the prophet accused him. He said, a contrite heart and a broken spirit. Thou, O Lord, cannot despise. So when we talk about the Davidic mantle, we are talking about the power to exercise kingship and rulership. But the key is brokenness. So if that man to comes on somebody here tonight, the consecration will be humility and brokenness. They will discover for the next three months, for the next five months, God will begin to emphasize brokenness and humility because the crown cannot rest on your head with pride. The Davidic order. And hear me, we need many rulers among us. We need many men that talk and their wars are laws. But they will need to catch the Davidic mantle. The mantle that makes men to become kings. There's the mantle of Paul. There's a mantle of Paul. See, all of the men you saw, the Bible said the things that were written at four time. Romans 15, verse 4. He said they were written for our learning. So that we through patience and comfort of the scripture might have hope. In 1 Corinthians 10, 11, they said the things that were written before now, they said they were written unto us, unto whom the end of the age is come. And the idea is because, he said, it's for an example. So that when we see those patterns, they are fortified with spiritual intelligence to know what to do. Imagine what happened. David was being chased by King Saul. First Samuel 24 verse 5 he had the opportunity to kill Saul but he would not even dare touch him. When David cut off Saul's garment the Bible said his heart smote him. How dare I touch God's anointed? That's the level of brokenness. When Saul died in 2 Samuel 1 11, the Bible said David tore his garment fell down and wept from night to morning that's the level of brokenness so there are people today who have all the revelation but they can't be rulers because they don't understand the secret of the Davidic mantle the secret is a heart that is not just after God but broken in humility before God so when we are talking mantles we are actually talking about patterns and dimensions in God that brings empowerment for kingdom advancement the mantle of Paul is a mantle of understanding what you don't understand, you can never have. He said in Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 4 to verse 6, he said the secrets that were withheld, he said, are in this last day revealed by his apostles and prophets. And he said, I have written this thing so that when you read it, you will come into the understanding that I have and operate in the same power. So he's telling us that for you to access the Pauline mantle, you must have understanding. Any area you don't have understanding in, you can never have authority. You can be close to a dimension not walk in it. It will be locked away until you have authority. When Job was lamenting against God and God appeared, the first thing God said is, who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? He said, declare now if you have understanding. That means you have no authority unless you have understanding. That is the mantle of Paul. It's a dimension and a pattern in Christ. So the night of mantles is the night of empowerment. But it's an empowerment that, that comes by making. God will give you appetites. God will give you consecrations. And God will give you abilities 
to operate certain things so that you can walk certain dimension. There are many ladies here who want to be mighty in God, but they don't know the code that Deborah had. They don't know the code that Esther had. What operates the Esther mantle is chastity and purity. If you are not a virgin, and if your heart is not after God, you cannot walk that level of that authority. It has nothing to do with body, skin color, or mascara, or foundation. It has everything to do with purity of garment, and a heart panting after God. If I perish, I perish. So the lady was not just a virgin, but she was sold out to God. There are many women here who want to control and regulate the hearts of kings, but they have no purity in their, in their vestment. Anything goes. And they throw themselves at every man that smile at them. And they think because they say, God, have mercy. And it's the era of grace. They will wield powers that women like Esther wielded. No, it doesn't work that. That mantle is sensitive only to virgins. If your garment is not pure and your heart is not after God, you can never operate in the Esther mantle. This is how mantles work. So, this is a night where God will speak to every one of us individually, depending on the mantle he wants to place on us. For some of you are Davidic mantles, God will beat on your pride. For some of us are Abrahamic mantles, God will insist on certain consecration. For some of us, they are Pauline mantles, God will insist on understanding. For some of us, they are Esther mantles, God will insist on purity, so that something will rest on you. Can you pray in the Holy Ghost for five minutes? Adonai Adonai From the rising of the sun To the setting of the sea Your name is to be known Adonai said it's a time will fail me to speak of Gideon to speak of Barak to speak of Jephthah to speak of Samuel to speak of David and the prophet that means I don't need to go into the details of their lives if you find their consecrations you will walk in their mantles he said who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness obtained promises point the mouth of the violence of fire shut the mouth of lions Weak men made valiant in battle. And he said they put to flight the armies of the alien. Kingdom will not shift until mantles rest. But mantles are a function of consecration. And our generation don't want it. Lift your hands and tell the Lord, I desire mantles sensitive to my calling and ordination. And if you have made that prayer, pray it loud. Pray it aggressively. Something is about to fall here. Something is about to fall. Something is about to fall. Baraba Sevena Kadia. Aruda Baraka Dona Sabaka. Adonai. Adonai. Is drawing my heart towards David. You know, David as an individual had seven horns. You know, the Bible said, My horn has now exalted. There are those who don't have one, they have seven. David was a psalmist, and I'm not talking singing song and being popular. David sang and conquered battles. He said, By my harp, I utter mysteries. Harp. So David prophesied with harp. How do you think David trained his soldiers? There was no record 
that David went to a brigade on military training. If David looked at them and sang, the sounds that David brought down from heaven could alter their molecular structure. David built warriors through sound. Warrior, imagine if we have men that carry Davidic order. You can just go to the seat of parliament, 6 a.m. in the morning, and sing some song, and angels will come to earth. Angels that can change decisions in parliament. Those are the powers we are talking about. That when you sing, warriors are born. That when you sing, angels are mobilized. David. David was a king. And the throne of David was likened to the throne of God. That's why Jesus is called the son of David. The Bible said daily men joined themselves with David. Until his host became like the host of God. When Jesus came, his throne was called the throne of David. David was a warrior. He fought 66 battles. He didn't lose one. This is beyond military intelligence. This is a dimension in the spirit. Many times when he wants to go to battle, he consults with the Urim and the Tumim. Shall I go? Will I overtake? Will I conquer? And he said, go. You will overtake. You will conquer. And you will recover all. However, they say when you see the Muberi tree move, it means the armies of heaven have gone ahead. So David won battles by aligning with the armies of heaven. That's why he can carry stones and win. Because when he's throwing those stones, angels are pointing their finger. Davidic order. David was a poet. When David writes, oh my. You, you, kings get confused if you read his writings the, the sweet psalmist of Israel oh my God oh my God a generation that carry mystical powers mystical dimensions in Christ are about to emerge can you pray with aggression for a moment listen we need to be clothed we need to be clothed men that see men that hear men that sing men that dance Men that fight, men that write, men that carry dimensions and places of heaven. Baragatoa Shabak, Vanilla Plata, Peruga, Bakazuza, Fateke Stopara, Raga. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the sea. Adonai 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 Do you know why? Do you know why the Bible spoke about this man? It's to show you dimensions of God that have visited the earth. Otherwise, you will sit in your corner and think you are doing something. By the time they tell you a man called Philip went to Samaria without evangelizing material and preached and took the city, you will know that you have work. By the time they tell you a man called Jonah was sent to a city and as he was approaching the city, he cried. He didn't go talking to people. He just cried in the streets of Nineveh the king tore his clothes in his palace and even animals fasted. That's to tell you you say you are a revivalist go and meet Jonah. Let him show you the power and the spirit of revival. That one man can cry even animals will fast. You think you are a revivalist go and meet John the Baptist. The guy left the city, went to the wilderness and he was crying there and the Bible said the whole of Jerusalem and Judea went to him. There was a power that drew the whole city. So John determines where the city is. If John came to London, he can cross over to the other side of the sea. And if he's crying there, everybody will locate from here and go there. They don't look for accommodation. They are the accommodation. God writes those things to show us that there are dimensions we have not seen. This is why we cry for mantles. Oh, we cry for mantles. 
we cry for dimensions we cry for graces can you cry for another one minute before the mantles fall here can you cry can you cry the microphone for Apostle Randolph to make some declarations but hear this God is telling me he wants to ordain men to be warriors the dimension of you know the mantle of David he teaches your hand to fight and your fingers to war your hand to fight he said by my God I ran through a troop by my God I leaped over a wall it's a mantle that teaches your hands to fight and your fingers to war. And it's not just about you. Even the men that walk with you will become mighty warriors. He said, Adoni, the Tacobite, he took a spear and he slew an army. He said, Eliezer, the son of Dodo, he carried a spear. He fought from morning till night. His hands became clean and he killed 800 men. He said, Shammah, the son of Aki, those are men that have drank of the Davidic mantle. I speak over you tonight, the garment of warriors, the mantles of warriors, the graces of warriors, wherever they are standing, Maretesh, Adwaka, Barusha, Bakade, Azolani, Mana, 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 carry that mantle now, carry that grace. Oshas help them, Oshas help them. Come on, be desperate. Come on, be desperate. If you see me go, if you see me go, Makata and La Palantia, Palutia, Italia Palo, Ayatala Makapa, Makapa, the Elijah Mantel, the Defendant Mantel, the Abrahamic Mantel, the Taborite Mantel, the Mantel of Paul, the Mantel of Peter, the Mantel of Joseph, Ayatapa, the Buttons. Of this man, the buttons that I mentioned, the graces of this man, let it rest on our generation, let it rest on our generation, let it rest on our generation. Apana, in Apayo, you are not desperate enough, you are not hungry enough. Oh, Arabakapa, Erabakapa, Makapaya Mahaya. In the name of Jesus, the Lord is telling me now, He's, he's impacting speed. You know, the Bible said the hand of God was upon Elijah and He outran the chariot. See, there are men who are do kings, it's by mantles. It's not about how long you started. 
It's about the means by which you are doing what you are doing. You can start something in three months and I'll do everybody who have been doing it for 10 years. It's about mantles. And there's a dimension of Elijah's mantle that imparts speed. Whenever you are standing on that business, in that career, in that ministry, in the name of Jesus the Christ, carry that grace now. Carry that grace now. Carry that grace now. The speed that causes a man to outrun the chariots of Ahab. Pray the Holy Ghost. Oh, shall help those who are under the anointing. Help them. You will never be the same again. You will never be the same again. You will never be the same again. Aferede, Kabila, Shakada, Batak. Bring them to the altar. Bring them to the altar. Those that are on the anointing. We have not started. I don't want people injured. Bring them to the altar. In the cave, Alini Kamada, Azeata, Paraga, Stabak, Mantos, 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 Mantos that impact speed. Shele, Kalis, Lelini Kamate, carry that place. Carry that place. Carry that place. Rekedos Tavina, Marcata. It's the night of commissioning. It's the night of impartation. It's the night of mantles and garments. I believe it that I hear it by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There was a, a dimension that Daniel carried. The Bible said, light and understanding was in this Daniel. And they said, in him dwells the spirit of the Holy Ghost. Light and understanding was in this Daniel. And he had the power to explain hard sentences because he carried an excellent spirit. There's a mantle that imparts the excellent spirit. The excellent spirit is what makes you excel above your generation. He said, of all that the king inquired of Daniel, he said, Daniel and his friends were ten times better than their peers. In the name of Jesus, there's a release of that order. There's a release of that dimension. There's a release of that pattern. Men that carry the excellent spirit, wherever you are standing, on ground on line in the name of Jesus step into that grace now step into that dimension step into that dimension Matere Matere Aruka Bagash Dabakai Pedakarosh Manta Tata Tarira Taras Pontari Bagadasta Lepatatatala Ifata Ibiskipata Come on receive it right now receive it right now Receive it right now. We release that mantle of fire. We release that mantle of fire right now. There are seven people catching that fire right now. The mantle of fire. In our shadow of Akapa. In Talabakapaya. Mantle of fire. Mantle of fire. Mantle of fire. In Talabaske Pataya. In Telebekapa. In Talu. In Patati. Paya Labakapa. There's a mountain of fire being released right now. Masotana Bakapa. Mountain of fire. Take it right now. Take it right now. I hear the Lord say, I'm opening us. I'm opening eyes. The mountain of Elijah. The mountain of Elijah. The mountain of Elijah. The men that are receiving sight, 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 sight. What seest thou? Intalopopara, Antalibri Capato, Intapacata, Alopatano, 
Come on, lift up your hands and be desperate. Lift up your hands and be desperate. I see God giving man swords like Eliab, the son of Dodo. Lift up your hands right now. There is a warrior's mantle right now. Rebecca Paya. The Lord said they will slay giant. There are six people. That mantle is coming upon your hands. Ushers, look at their hands right now. Look at their hands right now. God is blessing a soul. One decade, two decades, three decades, four decades, five decades, six decades. Rapasata. Sir, there's a sword in your hand. There's a sword in your hand. Take it right now. Take it right now. Take that warrior's mantle. Makataya. Ushers, look at their hands. There are swords in their hands. There are swords in their hands. There are swords in their hands. Makataya. Intelligent. Repatata, Ipalus Kepata, Repatantia, Ilamsa, come. Lift up your hand right now. Lift up your right hand now. I saw swords in the hands of men. God said He's giving them the ability to slay giants. It's a matter. I don't know that which is upon your city, but you are about to receive grace or your power. Lift up your hand. It will be seven people. All of a sudden, you see the fire of God descending on their hand like swords. Yes, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now lift up your voice. Begin to pray. It's falling upon you right now. It's falling. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, cry out. Let that mantle rest upon us. Makataya. Iraba. Yes, yes. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. It's the sword. It's the sword, 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 a parakapa, sled giants, sled giants, sled giants, sled giants, sled giants, a rapakota, a talabakopa, a pantanabasa, fantikapa, a rapatonte, selebekapada, a talabakopa, repatolo, a talabakapa, a telebekapa, a taliapa. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Maka Zelemekota Rabataya. I hear the Lord say, I'm releasing the Joseph kind. Oh, I'm releasing the Joseph kind. Men that will lead in the palace. Men that will lead in the city, men that will lead in the prisons, men that will lead in the house of Potiphar, men that will be held in positions where they will take charge. Get yourself kindness coming upon me. Rapatai. It will rest on eight people. It will rest on eight people. It will rest on eight people. Now be desperate and cry out to God and watch eight people catch that mantle right now. Watch eight people catch that mantle right Ah, God in a battle. Watch eight people. One, take it. Two, take it. Three, take it. Four, take it. Five, take it. Six, take it. Seven, take it. And take it. I'm talking about eight men and women that are receiving that mantle to lead wherever, to lead however. Your color will not be a problem. What you know will not be a problem. But all of a sudden, there's a certain mantle that is coming upon you. Wherever you go, you'll be in charge. Wherever you go, God will say that. Wherever you go, you shall live. This is God and Joseph. Lift up your say, Lord, tonight I am ready. The Davidic mantle. Where are the Davids? Where are the Davids? Where are the Davids? Where are the Davids? Lepataya. Repataya. A heap. 
a mantle for healing just rested upon him. I hear the Lord said a healing evangelist. I don't know who he is. But, but this young man will call people out of wheelchairs. Say, Lord Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I am ready for your release. Lift up your voice and pray. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. These are moments. These are moments. And these declarations have been made. Impartations and installations are taking place. It's not a ritual. It's that the house grew by the prophesying of Zachariah, the son of Edo. When utterances go forth, installations take place. In the name of Jesus. Listen, there are many giants that are standing against the purposes of God. And if they don't go now, the kingdom won't move. And so there are times when God raises giant killers. David had brothers who were also giant killers. The same way Goliath had brothers who were giants. And if you study your Bible, David and his brothers slew all the giants. The Lord is telling me now there's a grace for giant killers. The Bible spoke about Abishai. He slew a giant who was Goliath's brother. The Bible spoke about Elkanah. He slew a giant who was the brother of Goliath. The, brother, the Bible spoke about Jonathan, the brother of David. He slew a giant who was the brother of Goliath. Listen, there are partnerships in darkness. And there are also partnerships in light. The Bible spoke of Shibakai, who was also the brother of David. He slew a giant. So there were many giant killers in the armies of God. David was not the only giant killer. There were many other giants, big like Goliath, standing against the purposes of God. Lift your hands toward heaven. Some giants are in the tech. Some giants are in the parliament. Some giants are on the street. But we need giant killers. And there are mantles for giant killing. Father, wherever they are standing, the grace to defy giants and mountains. The grace to pull down giants and mountains. Let it rest now. Let it rest now. Let it rest now. Us shall help them. Us shall help them. Us shall help them. We are limited now. Time. We are constrained for time. But God wants to do a quick walk. God wants to do a quick walk. Aggregation of graces. Thank you, Father. 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 The Lord is telling me now he's clothing men with garments of revival. There are revivalist mantles. Jonah was one of them. John the Baptist was another. Jesus was one. And there are many other revivalists. Men that cry and nations quake. Men that cry and men repent. Father, wherever they are, there's a fire. There's a garment of fire. There's a garment of fire. There's a garment of fire. I have touched this so I know it. Wherever they are standing, let that come and rest on them now. Barakas, Tava, Kapate, Tatina, Tatina, Terak, Dari, Bakazozos, Takas, Daraga, Tatina, Zabakada, Sheliato, Bandege, Barakada, Garments of fire, Garments of fire. Carry that garment now. Thank you, Lord. I'm rounding up. God will heal the sick now. Because I sense an oil for healing. If you are here, you have any challenge, this is your time. Because God will heal the sick now. 
and God will also impact people with graces to address sickness. When that anointing comes, one of the ways God showed me is that I start picking what is happening to people. I feel it. And then sometimes I start seeing it. And when I see it, I can, I can trace it to where I'm feeling it from. And so I know now that God is beginning to touch those who have health conditions now. There's somebody somewhere here that has, you've had a heart issue, heart bones and heart palpitation. Somewhere around here. A heart condition. Who is the one? You have that heart palpitation. The Lord is telling me he's touching now. Put your hand there. That affliction lives forever. Touch! In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing somebody somewhere here. There's a condition with your arm. It's like you can't lift it. I don't know if it's a, if it's a bone issue or a, a boil of some sort. I just, I, I picked that quickly somewhere here. You have a condition. Is there somebody here? There's an issue with your arm. It looks like you can't lift that hand or something. I'm, I'm just, I'm thinking now. Who's the person? Come closer. Is there somebody here? There's a condition with your arm. The Lord is touching that person now. Where are you? Come. Mama, you are the one as well. Yes, I'm seeing that very close. Now lift that arm. Lift it. You are healed already. Lift that arm. Lift that arm. You are healed. Lift that arm. You are healed. Wherever you are, lift it. I'm seeing somebody with a gastric infection, something around your stomach. You are the one? It's a gastric challenge with your stomach. Put your hand there. It goes now forever. Forever. There's somebody here, you are struggling with your breath. You are struggling. Your daughter, be healed. There's somebody here, you are struggling with your breath. You are the one, brother. Come, come, come. Ah, 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 ah. I've seen somebody with a blurry vision. Something that looks like a blurry vision. A blurry vision. Remove those glasses. Ah. You, are, you, you have blurry vision. You can't see clearly from far. Yes. I know some of you are with glasses, but I'm talking. This is what I saw. Open! In the name of Jesus. Open! In the name of Jesus. Open! In the name of Jesus. Open! Open! In the name of Jesus. Open! You can begin to check those eyes. Open! In the name of Jesus. Open! Open! In the name of Jesus. Uh, who is having a condition with your menstrual cycle? I'm sensing it close here. You are the one. Put your hand on your tummy. It's going now. It's going now. That pain, that cramp, that irregularity. Go! In the name of Jesus. that person struggling with a migraine here I'm seeing somebody with pain on the head oh. never again there's somebody with a throat infection here there's something like a throat infection you are struggling with your throat you are the one put your hand there Everybody with a tumor is going now. Put your hand there now. It's going. Go! In the name of Jesus. Help him. 
That's right. Go! In the name of Jesus. I've seen somebody who can't walk. It's like you had an accident. Your knee is locked somewhere here. Your knee. Forever. Free forever. Lift that leg. Lift it. Lift it. Lift it. It's gone. It's, it's gone. Lift it. Mama. Mama, lift it. Carry that power. Carry it. power. Lift it, mama. I've seen somebody struggling with infection. Itching. Itching, itching, even around your private region, and it's embarrassing. It's gone. There's a cleansing happening. Free, free. Go. In the name of Jesus. a saw in the mouth. It's a saw in your mouth. Come, brother. It dries up. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same your name is to be hallowed. Forever. Free in the name of Jesus. Swallow, swallow, swallow. You are healed. The Lord is telling me that a tumor is leaving somebody's breast. Somebody had it's like a pain and a tumor of some sort. I don't know if you can if you can check. I'm just I'm sensing that energy and it's dematerializing. I don't know if there's somebody around here towards the front here. There's something like a tumor. And it's, it's, there's a pain as well. It's living now. It's dematerializing as we talk. As we speak. It's leaving you completely. It's, are you the one? Check it, my sister. Check it. You can go outside and check properly. You'll discover the tumor is gone. No, 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 no. Don't be distracted. Lift your hands. God is anointing people for healing. Oh. I'm saying somebody here, you are suffering from waist pain, waist, excruciating waist pain. It's like a belt. I'm just seeing that now. It goes forever. It goes forever. Jesus' name. You too. Leave in Jesus' name. Bend down, bend down. Bend down. Check it now. Pains. Go in the name of Jesus. Check it. Be aggressive. Don't be afraid. The Lord is telling me he's healing terminal infirmities. People with kidney infection is touching them now. And if you have a loved one, you want to call that person now. I'm about to make a declaration. You want to call that person now. Calling. Every one of you dreaming and seeing death, you will not die. You will live to proclaim the counsel of the Lord in the land of the living. Let them listen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over the spirits of infirmity. I decree now in the name of Jesus be bound I command sickness go in the name of Jesus I command the chain of sickness break in the name of Jesus now receive your healing I see ears hear pains go organs be renewed blood be cleansed in the name of Jesus chain of sickness lives now in the mighty name of Jesus be gone be gone be gone be gone healed in Jesus name thank you father
Now lift your hands. God wants to anoint people to walk in the healing anointing. Ushers, help them for me quick. Help them for me quickly. Help them for me quickly. There's an up here. Help them for me. Help them for me quickly. Father, touch. According to your word, it's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. Every agent of healing, every carrier of the mantle of healing, wherever you are standing now, I summon you. Come up, Peter. Come up, Peter. Hello, him. Adonai. Hello, him. Adonai. Elohim Adonai When you leave this meeting Go and lay your hands on the sick You'll be amazed what will happen The Lord is telling me now There's somebody carrying a pain in the stomach And it looks like there's a tumor of some sort Somewhere here there's something like a pain. I don't know if it's a fibroid pain, but it's in the tummy. He wants to remove it now. Here. Lift your hands. Come out of her. Come out. Come out. In the name of Jesus. Elohim Adonai. Prophet, make some declaration. of God. See, when you see him, you see him as the apostle. But when I see him, I see fire. Apostle said, God makes some, uh, sorry, the angels are spirit. But the apostle Michael, sorry, <laughs> he's the flame of fire. I was in wilderness in Punjab, India. I saw his video. And keep watching, keep watching. I couldn't understand properly English. Sorry about that. But I was keep watching. I said, God, I desire this man to meet him. And this is not finished there. I put his video on the USB and put in my church. And the, every day the people coming in church, like 10, 20, and they're standing and watching him. And they couldn't understand even one word of English because they are from Punjab. But they said, when he speak, we feel something. And this is, this is not small. You cannot understand. And the old man and young, they said, when this man is something about him. But when you see, you see apostle. But when I see, I see fire. I come from Punjab to see this fire. But when yesterday I was sitting in the church and this, the Holy Spirit was telling me, you see this man, the nation will be waiting for him to come and to speak. Because I left the UK in 20. 23. I tell you my little testimony before I go and declare. My wife gone with the Lord in 2022. And the doctor said to me, he said, your wife going to, because she admit on Friday, and she said, your wife going to be die on Saturday. I say, my wife will not die Saturday. Talk to with me. I come with the Lord and the Lord is my side, not your side. Because I come from the family, sick family and where I go to the church they don't like Christian. They hate and it's not easy thing to do church there. 
and the 21 day passed and she still was there and the night I was sleeping and in my vision the angel was standing outside the door and they said we want to take her but we cannot until you say the word and I'm telling you I was talking to man, with the man of God I said I have many encounters with the man, man of God which they are already doing old prophet and soon in, in my vision I said take him and I opened my eyes she gone And she was still in coffin. And then Sunday was coming. And I have to preach. So I was preaching to India. Online. Because that's used to she do. But now I'm doing. And when I bury her. I went back to Punjabi. I said. God send me. Not with the empty hand. Like Apostle said, you can have best study and you can go to Bible school, but if you don't have power, you're empty. And this was like a queue. There's a 30, 35 people. And the woman said to me, she said, I got cancer in my throat. With the, she's standing with the report. I took the report. I put down, I put the feet on it. I grabbed it and said, go. And this she for a week with the, another report. No cancer. And I'm not the man just came from Punjab just like that. But when I was seeing apostle, I said, they take too lightly. I'm sitting in church. When you are in a desert, you are thirsty. You know the valley of the water. Trust me. Me and my wife now, the new one, and the baby is coming as well. We keep watching Apostle all the time. If you check my phone, I have so many videos. Trust me, this four day, I'm a blessed. I hope you all blessed. All the men of God here and our another apostle, he is on fire. See, some men of God, when they come and preach, I love how do they preach. I don't like jealous. Oh, they do. Why I can't do? It? But some they jealous. And they still they think that God loved them. No. No, sir. I had so many testimonies, but I have so many scars as well in my life. If you think, yeah, yeah. God gonna bless you with a mighty way. Your enemy and me are going to stand before you from today because the apostle is here. When you go out, you're going with power. Your army of God, you will be standing on the front, not on the back. And God will be with you. And 2024, any trap enemy make for you, you will come out. And that trap will never work on you. When the three Hebrew boy, the king said, bow down. And the other all they bow down. First only three, they didn't bow down. Because you were one of them. And because of they didn't bow down, and the others which they bow down, they stand with them. Many people are going to stand with you. 
and the king or devil they set fire for them and they increase fire seven times and they put in them fire and that's he see he said it's not like three people i can see four he said my fire is a real or not is it looks like a fake and he put hand in it and his hand is burned any enemy put fire against you they will be burned by self in the name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus you will not burn your hair will not smell they said when they come out the hair was not smelling any trap enemy put for you you will come out but that fire will not for you that fire will for them i ask this prayer in the mighty name of jesus Amen. Lift your hands towards the moon. We are closing. Five minutes, we are out of here. I want Apostle Randolph, just 30 seconds, to make a declaration over every one of you because you have been recruited. And he has labored here. God has given him a lot of hope. He's raising an army. I want him to just declare over you for the city to open to you so that the same testimony he has in the land the same success he has recorded. Let every individual here begin to record that level of testimony. Lift your hands briefly. We are doing this in 30 seconds. The Lord said to Abraham, your descendants will possess the gates of their enemies. The Lord said to Abraham again in Genesis 13, he said, lift your eyes. He said, northward, southward, eastward, westward. He said, as far as you can see. Then he went a further step to say, rise up. He said, walk the length and breadth of the land. He said, everywhere you would walk, I'm giving it to you. Then he came to Joshua in Joshua 1 and said, wherever the sole of your feet shall tread, I would give it to you as an inheritance. Lift up your hands right now. Now, one of the things you need to know is that it is your inheritance. Say, it is my inheritance. Psalm 24, he said the earth is the Lord's. Does the, is the UK part of the earth? Talk to me. Is the UK part of the earth? Then he said the earth is the Lord's. If God would raise men like Joseph, foreigners in the land of Egypt, and cause them to rise to the highest of positions, then it means that everyone here everyone here who is ready God would release therefore in the name of Jesus we speak to the four angels standing at the four corners of the United Kingdom carrying the four winds that hear ye the voice of God lift your hands higher that do not all oh land of the United Kingdom do not consider these ones as mere men consider them as gods consider them as ambassadors of the kingdom and let them this land that is rightfully theirs therefore in the name of Jesus I decree over your life let the land of the united kingdom open up to you let the land of the united kingdom open up to you from the north to the south from the east to the west from the centermost part of the land to the hinterlands of every city, of every community, of every nation, from England to Scotland, from Wales to Northern Ireland, from every part of the land, let it open, 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 possess it. Possess it, possess it, possess it, possess it, possess it, possess it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. May the land not reject your voice, but may the land be given unto you in the name of Jesus. Shout a big amen. Give the Lord a big hand. I'm rounding up now. How many of you already noticed a change or a healing? You have noticed a healing? You've seen some hands.
pain has left, left, knocked, has unlocked eyes. You can see where anybody, how many of you have noticed a healing? Can I see those hands? Can I see those hands? Lift them high, lift them high, be bold about it. Many have already been touched. We can't take your testimonies, but you can send it to Apostle Wedding. Some of you, you wake up tomorrow and discover something happened to you. In the name of Jesus. Now, hear this. If you were blessed by this message you just listened to, and you wish to make Jesus your Lord and personal Savior, kindly repeat the prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe in your Son, Jesus Christ, and that he died for my sins. He was raised from the dead for my justification. I, therefore, confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Lord of my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I am born again. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. If you just said this prayers, congratulations. You are now a member of the family of God. Kindly send us an email, prayer at encounterjesusministriesinternational.org. You can also visit our website, at www.encounterjesusministriesinternational.org